In a previous video, we discussed the importance of a ride's height requirement and why height requirement is important to rider safety. While height requirements are important, it is really only one part of rider safety requirements. Rides have two main types of rider safety requirements, which are height requirements and ride admission policies. Ride admission policy is sometimes called other names at different parks, such as rider access policy or rider restrictions. All of these terms refer to the physical requirements guests must meet in order to ride an attraction. This can include things like casts, braces, amputations, prosthetics, or other medical conditions. The policy of what conditions are and are not able to ride a specific attraction will vary from ride to ride. These policies are determined by the attraction manufacturer and are based on the design of the ride, the forces of the ride, and the restraint system used on the ride. This video is intended as a general guide and explanation of ride admission policy. For more detailed information about ride admission policy and how it relates to you, contact guest services at any park you plan to visit. Rides and attractions are, by their very nature, dynamic and thrilling. There are inherent risks in riding any amusement ride. If you choose to ride, you accept these risks. Participate responsibly. You should be in good health to ride safely. You know your physical conditions and limitations. The park does not. If you suspect that your health could be at risk for any reason or could aggravate a pre-existing condition of any kind, do not ride. That was a paraphrased line from a rider safety guide sign found at an actual amusement park. These rider safety guide signs contain most of the information you need to know about a particular ride or attraction, and it's a good idea to read them before deciding if you're going to experience a ride or attraction if you have concerns about ride admission policy. One of the most frequently encountered conditions that can permit or prohibit someone from being able to ride an attraction is casts. Some rides and attractions allow almost any cast to ride, while others do not allow any at all. For example, B&M, one of the most popular roller coaster manufacturers in the world, does not allow any casts on their rides at all. This is due to the forces placed on riders as well as the design of their restraints. These factors make it potentially dangerous for someone wearing a cast to ride any B&M roller coaster. Some other rides have a more detailed policy, with many rides around the world allowing partial arm or leg casts, but not full arm or leg casts. A full arm or leg cast can be defined as a cast that prevents an arm or leg from bending. Oftentimes, thrill rides will prohibit full arm and leg casts, but allow partial arm and leg casts to ride. Usually, this is due to the inability of a full arm or leg cast to fit inside the ride vehicle. The cast must fit properly inside of a ride vehicle like a rider's unobstructed arms or legs. If this cannot be done, it's often deemed unsafe for a rider to experience a ride or attraction. This of course will vary from ride to ride. Braces generally have the same rules as casts. However, if a brace is removable, it's often not considered when determining if someone can ride an attraction. Amputations also have a very diverse set of rules depending on the attraction. Much like casts, amputations can be split into two categories partial and complete amputations. The distinction between complete and partial amputations is typically defined as being above or below the knee or elbow. Rides that use lap bars and seat belts as their primary restraint typically require riders to have at least one full leg and one partial leg in order to ride. Though this of course is a very general rule and will vary from attraction to attraction. Arm amputations can also be a bit confusing, but most rides will require that riders have at least one functioning hand and arm to be used for bracing during the ride. In this way, a rider who has two complete arms but no hands may be barred from riding some rides. Every ride is different though, and some rides have exceptions as well as special devices. For example, B&M, who we mentioned earlier, introduced a body harness that can be worn by riders who, due to their amputations, would otherwise be unable to ride. This harness can give these riders a chance to ride by strapping them into a specialized harness that connects directly to the train using small hooks on a specific seat of the train. This system, though, is not a perfect solution, as there are some amputees who are still unable to ride B&M coasters, even with a body harness. Amputations have to be some of the strictest ride admission policy requirements. Multiple accidents have occurred in the industry due to lack of enforcement or lack of guidance from manufacturers regarding amputations. Many other medical conditions are not visible to operators, making them especially dangerous for riders with these conditions. Some of these conditions include recent surgery, heart trouble, high blood pressure, neck trouble, back trouble, and pregnancy. Some rides will allow these conditions to ride, and some will not, based on the requirements from the manufacturer. You can easily find all of the ride admission policy requirements by reading the rider safety guide sign found at the front entrance to many rides and attractions, or by visiting guest services. 
Hopefully this video has taught you that an extreme amount of thought and engineering goes into determining ride admission policy. There's no obvious standard because every ride is different. However, amusement parks do the best they can to make their rides both safe and accessible for all guests.